the at the book of Acts chapter 18. I'll look at uh, various parts of chapter 18 this, this evening. Uh, Paul continues on his, uh, on his missionary journeys, uh, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ uh, to the, 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 the known world at that time. And in, and in some cases, he left out various villages by turning uh, those areas upside down uh, for the Lord. Uh, the Apostle Paul experienced and saw firsthand the supernatural uh, precious works of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And, and when we are when we are engaged in the uh, in the work of God, we're able to see God's supernatural works occur. When we're engaged in the works of God, when we are not engaged in the works of God, then we perhaps may not see. Uh, God's supernatural works at hand. Uh, so as we continue to uh, look to the scriptures, we see uh, the Holy Spirit drawing, uh, drawing people unto himself, Holy Spirit drawing people unto himself. And that same Holy Spirit is doing uh, that great work, uh, even in our midst, uh, this, uh, this very hour. So, uh, we're going to begin right at uh, chapter 18, right at the top of, of chapter 18. Uh, again, as we have looked at each of these chapters and, and uh, have somewhat taken uh, these, these, these uh, verses or these chapters verse by verse, we, we see that there is a sincere commitment uh, to serve the Lord a sincere commitment to be so dependent on the move of God like never before. And so uh, Luke, uh, um, who is instrumental in writing the book of Acts, is, uh, is using a special way to document many of these, uh, these incidents and these, these, these various things that, that happened. As, uh, as the Apostle Paul would share with people. Uh, beginning, at verse, beginning at verse number one of Acts chapter 18, it says, after these things, Paul departed from Athens and he came to Corinth. And he found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. And because he was the same craft, he abode it with them and Rolf for by their occupations, they were tent makers. Now, what we learned uh, from, uh, from this introductory passage of scripture here is that, uh, is that the Apostle Paul uh, become acquainted with Aquila and Priscilla. And uh, they had uh, one thing in common. I wonder if you that one thing in common at this point, uh, I wonder if anyone can share with me what that one thing in common that they had. What was that one thing in common that Aquila, Priscilla, and the Apostle Paul had in common based on the scriptures we just read? Anyone want to give it a shot? One thing in common. Go ahead, please. Are they all servant of Christ? Uh, not quite. Um, uh, at, at verse, look at verse three, I'll read it again. 
It says, and because he was of the same craft, this is what they have in common, of the same craft, he aboded with them in wrath. For by their occupation, they were tent makers. So Paul, um, uh, secular job was he manufactured tents. We know uh, in the in, in the Bible days, many traveled various places and they settled in various places and they pitched tents and they lived in those uh, in those tents. And so the Apostle Paul was a tent manufacturer. And so that's how he raised money uh, to do ministry. In modern day vernacular, we would we would say that uh, he was a biovocational um, evangelist or missionary, meaning um, he he worked uh, uh, and made a living and used the used the resources from uh, from his job to help him to fund ministry. And that's what we uh, that's what we find uh, here. And this is really the uh, only part of scripture that I believe we are learned that the Apostle Paul had a uh, 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 again uh, modern day uh, uh, vernacular. He had a side hustle. Uh, he was uh, doing another job on the side in order to uh, make a living in order to take care of his, his, his needs because the, the dollars that was needed for ministry uh, was great as dollars is great even today. Uh, you know, there are just so many aspects of ministry that is very expensive, very expensive. And, um, and so um, oftentimes people are concerned uh, why uh, churches uh, take up so many offerings and and different things, but ministry is uh, very expensive. And I would I would say to you, me being a bivocational uh, pastor uh, that uh, have never drew income from the ministry, uh, I can I can tell you that uh, that ministry. Is 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 extremely expensive, and that if and that if that if you're not you know if you're not careful, um, and you're withholding uh, you know finances from a ministry that God has uh, provided to you to give to ministry, you you in essence you're you're hindering uh, the sharing of the good news of Jesus of Jesus Christ. But we see here in the Apostle Paul life, and uh, for those of you that just tuned in, we're at Acts, at Acts chapter 18, and we've just covered verses one through three, if you can pick up there. But we, we see here that Paul had a sincere commitment uh, to carry the gospel message and to get the gospel message out uh, to, the, to, the, to the people of God even if it meant him raising those funds himself in order to make that in, in order to make that happen as we as as we as we move down and, and you know it is it is good when you when you find people involved in ministry that they're not in ministry they're not engaged in ministry to take from the ministry but they're, but they're engaged in ministry to give back uh, to the ministry and support them to support the ministry. And so we we see that uh, here uh, in um, in these uh, passage that and passage of scripture, especially on that uh, that latter one verse verse number three. But let us let us move on. It says, and he uh, he even Paul reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. You know, 
persuasion and the gift of persuasion is a is a very good gift. The gift of being able to uh, put something together in such a way that people want what you have. Uh, uh, we call it evangelism. Uh, the you know the ability to be able to uh, show a person their ways and and to show them that there is another way. And so uh, the the apostle Paul was uh, was was uh, very gifted in that. And so we see here in, in verse uh, verse four, and he reasoned. The scripture said, and he reason in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. And when Silas and, and Timothy were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was the Christ. Obviously, there was some misunderstanding about who Jesus was. And so the anointing of, of God was upon uh, the apostle Paul that allowed him to uh, convey the message that Jesus Christ was the true Messiah that he was the one that they had been looking for and that the Messiah had come and the Messiah had gone. Verse six, and when they opposed, and, and when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his remnants and said unto them, your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean from henceforth. I will go unto the Gentiles. Um, in the in the Gospels, um, uh, uh, a, a nice lesson is taught about when you when you share the the gospel message with individuals and they don't want it, that you somewhat shake the shake the dust off of your feet and you move on. You you move on. You know the the the, the gospel message is, is never intended uh, to be forced down uh, someone's throat. That when we share the gospel message, individuals that decide they don't want to hear it, don't want to receive it, it it's it's I don't want to say it's okay for them, but uh, you've done your part. Our, our role is to tell that you know. The, the to tell, to go. That's our role. Our role is not to convict. Our role is not even to save, but our role is to tell. The scripture says, go and tell. Go, go and tell. You know, go into the highways and hedges and compel them to, to come in so that the house of the Lord will be filled. Uh, go into Judea, Samaria, and in the emoti in the into the ultimate ultimate parts of the earth, teaching them to observe all things. Go, go. We, we've been told to go and tell, but our role is not our is not to convict. We are we are not uh, we are not the one to do the uh, convicting. Uh, we're the ones to just tell. You just you just share with them. The, the scripture says to to share with them uh, the hope that we have within us. We're at, if you're just tuning in, we're at uh, Acts chapter 18, and we're actually talking through uh, the Apostle Paul works in, in partnering with Aquila and Priscilla, the, 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 the tent makers, and the Apostle Paul sharing, uh, sharing with others uh, the hope uh, that uh, he has in in Jesus Christ. When we when we go down, go all the way down. Uh, 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 ver, uh, ver, go go down verse six again. It said, and when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, 
he shook his raiments and said unto them, your blood be upon your own, your own head. The, the, the word um, blaspheming is a, is, a, is a very powerful word. Uh, uh, the word blaspheming, it's, 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 it's similar to uh, cursing um, the, the actual nature and the and the uh, authentic, authentic, authenticity, authenticity of Jesus Christ. You 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 know you blaspheme him. You 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 say he's a hoax. He he does not exist. He's not you know he he's not real. And you curse the very nature of of, of him. That's blaspheming. And blaspheming is a is, is 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 very very powerful and uh and when we see people practicing this we know that they are caught up into some evilness some evilness that is very very damaging so the scripture says when they did that the apostle paul pretty much said that i, I his role was to only give them the message and they rejected the message and blasphemy. So he pretty much washed his hands and he said to them that, that their blood is not on their hands. I, I wanna share something else that just kind of came to my spirit that each one of us, every single one of us listening in, we are responsible to share with others the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. There are people that are in my circle that you'll never be able to reach. And there are people in your circle that I'll never be able to reach. But the only way they will hear the message of hope, the message of eternal life, the message of salvation, is that you tell them that there are many people, but not most people will not listen, but they will listen to you. So from a technical biblical standpoint, if you're the only person in this world that God can use to give them that message, then their blood is on your hands. But the minute you give the message to them, you, you share with them the hope that you have in Jesus Christ and that they should consider in embracing that hope then their blood is no longer on your hands. We are all accountable to a certain amount of people, people in our sphere of influence. That's right. And, uh, and so we're accountable to them. God uh, have placed them in our sphere of influence so that we can uh, uh, convey his message to them. When we, when we chose not to, uh, convey his message to them, then they they never really have an opportunity uh, to surrender, to give themselves uh, to the to the Lord. So be mindful of the people that God has strategically placed around you, that they are around you. They're part of your sphere of influence because God wants to use you to share with them the hope uh, that you have in Jesus Christ and for them to uh, gravitate and hold on and, uh, and have that same hope that, that, that you have. Because it's clear that once Paul shared with them the message and they rejected it, Paul said in his own words, he says, your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean from henceforth, and I will go unto the Gentiles, meaning I've done what God has called me to do. Now I'm going to move on and sh share the message with others, perhaps others that will that would embrace it. Again, Acts uh, chapter 18, we are down to verse number seven. The scripture says, as he departed thence, and entered into a certain man's house named Justice, one that worshiped God 
whose house joined hard to the synagogue. And, and Caiaphas, Caiaphas, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all of his heart. And many of the Corinthians hearing believed and were baptized. They believed and were baptized. Again, the, 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 the salvation message is not a complicated thing. When you hear the message of Jesus Christ, what is required of you is to embrace it and believe it. And that's what they did. They embraced it and they believed it. And they were, uh, the scripture says, they were, they, they, they were baptized. Then spake, verse 9, the Lord in, to Paul in the night by a vision. He says, be not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace. Uh, uh, that means to, to, to not be silent. That means that whatever God has placed on your heart, hold not your peace. That means open up your mouth, hold not, hold not your peace. He tells them, for I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city. This was the, this was the message uh, the Lord spoke uh, to Paul at night in a vision. So he's telling him, I got people, I got people in this city. I got people there for you. Look at verse 11. And he continued there a year and six months. And what was he doing there? He was teaching the word of God among them. He was teaching the word of God among them. The teaching of the word of God is, is paramount for our spiritual and our growth and our development. The word of God says, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We find that in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse, uh, ver verse 15. So, so the apostle Paul, he continued there a year and a half, teaching the word among them. The only way that, uh, that, that you and I can get strong in the Lord, we get strong in the Lord by, uh, by teaching and uh, by being part of some teaching of the word of God. You know, the way that our faith uh, is increased, our faith is increased by hearing the word of God. Uh, the, the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. You know, there are many things that can lift you up. Uh, there, are, there are great songs that can hear you, lift you up. There are great poems that can lift you up. There are great affirmations and, and readings and, and things that can lift you up. But there is only one thing that can truly transform you, that can truly change your life, and that's the word of God. There is much power in the word of God. For the Bible says the word of God is more powerful, more sharper than any two-edged sword. So as, as Paul was teaching them the word of, the word of God, they were able to gain, get stronger. Their faith was able to increase. And so oftentimes when we are down and we are discouraged, what we need to do is get somewhere and play some recorded scriptures and just listen to the word of God. Listen to the word of God. Allow the word of God to, uh, to marinate on the inside of you like never before. I did this, this little project. Uh, one, uh, I was going to a conference in Orlando 
And I made this little arrangement with the Lord. I said, Lord, I'm going to listen to uh, the book of Psalms all the way from, from, from uh, Pembroke Pines all the way to Orlando. And I'm going to listen to it all the way back. Again, my, my goal was to, uh, to clear all of the book, all of the book of Psalms during my, do, during my trip and was able to actually get there. Uh, but, but what that did for me is that the, my two and a half, three hour drive, uh, I'm not sure if I was speeding or taking my time. I think back in those days, I was a little, uh, little heavy, little heavy footed. Uh, so I probably was going a little faster than usual. Now uh, I adhere to the uh, speed limit. I have made my contributions to sheriff departments and highway patrols and and um, local police departments on 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 tickets. I, I've given my contributions for a lifetime, so I just follow the speed limit now. So you you trailing behind me, going uh, going on the highways and the byways prepare yourself to adhere to the, the speed limits because I uh, have learned to, to, to stay away from them. Uh, so uh, the more of the word of God we get in us, uh, the more stronger we are, the, the more our faith is increased, uh, the more we can see God do great things. Uh, and when, 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 when issues and challenges come our way, we can always yield to the word of God, yield to the word of God. And, and by, the word, by the way, the, the scripture says that God's word will never return void. That's right. His, his word will never return void. So we're going to finish up this latter part uh, here and uh, we'll, uh, we'll save the rest for next week. Um, Look at verse uh, 12. And when Galileo was the deputy of Archaea, the Jews made, in, made insurrection with one accord against Paul and brought him to the judgment seat, saying, this fellow persuaded men to worship God contrary to the law. Meaning they did, they did not like uh, his teachings. And when Paul was now about to open his mouth, Galileo said unto the Jews, if it were a matter of wrong or wicked lawlessness, or ye Jews reason would that I should bear with you. But if it be a question of words and names and of your law, look ye to it. For I will not judge such a matter. And he dab them from the judgment seat. Then all the Greeks took Sotinus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, and they beat him before the judgment seat. And Galileo cared for none of those things. Again, they were uh, looking to put Paul under judgment and, uh, and uh, sentence him or arrest him for proclaiming, you know, the good news of good, good news of Jesus Christ. And when this ruler heard why they were there, he found no reason, uh, no reason to, to harm the, uh, the apostle Paul. Now we know uh, throughout uh, this book, we 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 see, we, we see the apostle Paul being involved in uh, being involved in several things, uh, but we do know we do know for sure that he was always preaching 
the good news of Jesus Christ without any doubt that he was very passionate about the message of, of Jesus Christ. Let's look at this last section as we, as we prepare to wrap up this evening. Uh, in verse 18, and Paul after this carried there yet a good while, he tarried there yet a good while, and then took his leave of the brethren and sailed this into Syria, and with him Priscilla and Aquila, having shown his, his head in uh, century, for he had a for he had a vow. And he came to Ephesus and left them there. But he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. Now, often when Paul reasoned with the Jews, it was his desire to connect them to believe in Jesus Christ. That was his role. That was his role. That was his job to connect them to Jesus Christ. That's, and that's, that, that's, that's our role is to connect people to Jesus Christ. And when we connect them to Jesus Christ, we have, uh, we've, we've accomplished, we, we've, we've accomplished that uh, completely. Look at verse, ver, verse 20. When they desired him to tarry longer, a longer time with them, he consented not. He chose not to stay, but bade them farewell, gave him farewell, saying, I must by all means keep this feast that cometh in Jerusalem, but I will return again unto you if God's will. And he sailed from Ephesus. He sailed from Ephesus. You know, I notice in this text here in verse 21, I just want to uh, make note of it, that, that Paul says, he said, I would like to come back and visit with you if it's God's will, if it's God's will. And, um, you know, oftentimes we, we make our own plans to do certain things. And sometimes those things that we make our plans to do, it's not in the will of God. And so it is a good habit uh, for us, even if we do not necessarily verbalize it to others, but it's a good habit of ours, should be a good habit for us to put in our minds that when we commit to doing something that we would somewhat say, if it's God's will. Okay, if it's God's will, if it's God's will, because while you may have a lot of things in your list, a lot of things that you want to accomplish today, but God may have something else, but God may allow something else to occur that may not afford you an opportunity to do what you plan to do. So Paul breaks it down and he says, I love to come back and, and hang out with you all uh, if it's God's will, he said, if it's God's will. And uh, look at the uh, look at the latter uh, uh, part. Uh, the, uh, the scripture says that when he had landed in Syria, Caesarea, I'm sorry, and gone up and saluted the church, he went down to Antioch. He went down to Antioch. And after he had, verse 23, last verse, after he had spent some time there, he departed and went all over the country of Galatia and Pergian in order, in that order, strengthening all the disciples. So he, uh, he took advantage of this opportunity while he was in uh, Galatia to, to, to strengthen uh, the believers. And we know how, we already looked at, the, at this, we know how believers are strengthening. We are strengthened by the word of God. We're strengthened by 
hearing the word of God, we're, we're strengthened by fellowship, by, by, by prayer. We're strengthened when we do spiritual things, spiritual things. And, and you know, if there's anything that the enemy desires to do to us, and that is to keep us away from the word of God. And you know, I have I've purpose in my heart as a, as a pastor that I would have Bible study with the church, even if, just, if it's just one person, even if it's just me and my wife, even if it's just one person, because there is nothing to replace the word of God in, in our life. There's nothing more powerful than to have the word of God active in your, in your life. The greatest thing that we could ever do for ourselves is to give ourselves the word of God, give ourselves a dose of the word of God every day. There must be some spiritual uh, involvement in our life every day to keep us growing and, to, and, 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 and developing uh, in the Lord. Uh, the word of God is, 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 is nourishment uh, to our spiritual uh, life, is, is nourishment. It's just like rain and, uh, and dew and uh, all types of, uh, of nutrients that, uh, that God uses to put upon the earth. The word of God is like that to us. And so one of the greatest things the enemy does is that he seeks to take us, you and I, he seeks to pull you and I away from the word of God. So we have the uh, purpose in our heart that we're going to do everything we can uh, to put the word of God in us. Uh, the scripture says, feed me until I want no more. The scripture tells us that we should hunger and thirst for righteousness. That's the word of God. That's the word of God. So this evening we covered several things. We we we've, we've looked at at the earlier part. We looked at at Paul uh, declaring himself to us, perhaps for the very first time, that he had an occupation. He was bivocational. He had an occupation in which he manufactured tents and he sold tents. And he used the proceeds from selling of these tents to fund ministry. And this is a new, new area that we've learned about the, the Apostle Paul uh, being, this, being a tent maker. And he, he joined forces with these, this husband and wife uh, tent makers, and they had some things in common. And we also see here that although he went to different places teaching, and preaching the gospel message, not everybody received him. So if everybody is not, didn't receive the apostle Paul, we should be very careful and not allow our feelings to get hurt because others are not receiving us. But we've established in our readings this evening that we are all, we all have people in our sphere of influence. We all have people that God has placed in our lives for us to share with them the hope that is within you. Trust you would begin to think about some of the people in your sphere of influence that you've never ever uh, shared with them the great hope that you have in Jesus Christ. Well, it's incumbent upon you to do so. Why not start right now? Because if you don't uh, share with them the hope that's within you, then you're also like uh, what the Apostle Paul said. If you don't share with them the hope and they're around you, then their blood is on your hands. So we want to be real careful with that. People in our sphere of influence, those are people that we see every day, people that we interact with every day, people that we may even love and appreciate. We need to share with them how much you love Jesus. Just Sometimes just be just be transparent and say, you know, without Jesus in my life, I don't know where I would be today. Without Jesus guiding and directing me, I don't know what I would do. And so just saying something like that and sharing something like that to others can be so powerful, so powerful, and could lead them and bring them to the uh, to the saving saving knowledge of the truth. So we're going to pick up at verse 24 
uh, next week in our, our teachings, and we'll pick up at, at, in verse 24 as uh, Apollos uh, uh, began teaching uh, uh, those about Jesus Christ and teaching them very, very effectively. I want to pause and see if there's any thoughts, any comments, uh, any observations that any of you might have uh, before we close out in prayer for this evening. Any, any final thoughts, any final thoughts or comments? Go right ahead. Amen. Amen. I guess it was clear as mud uh, this evening. Uh, but we, we are going to uh, go ahead and close out and close out in prayer. We are kind of down to the last. Uh, yes, Prince of the Lord. Go, go ahead. Yes, we, yes, I do. We, we should testify to, of God's goodness and share the word of God because we don't know who may be in need. And depending on us to, you know, depending on us for a word of encouragement, or maybe it was the, it's a moment of decision for that person, but and with us just sharing our faith with them, help them to make that decision and make up their mind to follow after Christ. So I do believe that we should testify of the goodness of God every opportunity we get to share the goodness of God, amen. Amen, amen, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, the, the scripture tells us to, to always be ready to give an account of the hope that is within us. Always be ready, people of God, to give an account of the hope uh, that is within us. So we're we're encouraged to always be on on, on red alert. You know, I never I I'll never forget that uh, I was with I was a young Christian at the time and really did not uh, understand the Word of God, but I was you know seeking to grow, and I was. Uh, in, I was in Japan at the time and I was with some uh, missionaries. Uh, we were out passing out gospel tracts. And um, I saw this gentleman coming to me and uh, he spotted me like at a distance and he was coming straight at me. And I was getting young in my faith. And I'm like, Lord, please, please don't let this gentleman ask me any questions about God or whatever, because I know I'm not going to be able to answer any questions. And so he comes up to me and he says to me that he would like to give his life to Jesus Christ. <laughs> and I'm like, you want to do what? <laughs> and so, uh, so I had the privilege to lead him to the Lord. Uh, again, the God had already prepared his heart and I had the privilege to lead him to the Lord. The gentleman uh, name. I'll never forget his name is, 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 is written in one of my old Bibles, uh, but I'll never forget his name. Ronald Easterly was his name. He's the first person that I led to the Lord. Ronald Easterly. Don't know if he's still alive or, or uh, uh, already in heaven or on earth, uh, hopefully somewhere proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. But I met him in Japan, only saw him one time, but I led him, led him to the Lord. So always be ready to give an account of the hope that we have within us. Any, anyone else, anyone else before we close out in prayer? So good to have you all here uh, this evening. And I pray God's uh, blessings on each one of you. Anyone else? Amen, amen. Okay, we're going to close out in prayer. I do want to uh, continue to uh, pray uh, for Sister Sandra Gibson and uh, God's healing, God's supernatural uh, healing power in her life. Uh, and we thank God for protecting her and sparing her and keeping her here with us to uh, continue to do a mighty and a great work uh, for him. And we, we, we thank God for her and many others that some have been through the virus and have uh, recovered. And we pray that God will continue to heal and, uh, and protect them. 
So let us close out in, out in prayer this evening. Oh Lord, oh God, how excellent and majestic is your name over all the earth. We thank you, Lord God, for this time of sharing and reading your scriptures with the uh, people of God. And we pray, Lord God, that you will continue to be near and dear. Father, to every single one of us, as we trust in you, as we put our faith in you, Lord God, we think we're thankful this evening because we know your word tells us that you would do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think. And, and we bless your name this evening for that. And Lord God, if there be someone, Lord God, part of this circle right now that need a supernatural touch from you, Lord God, we pray right now, Lord God, that you would touch them in the mighty precious name of Jesus. We pray over our families, our daughters, our sons, our mothers, our dads, our husbands, our, our wives, our, uh, our uh, friends. Uh, we pray over the entire church family. Be with every single one of us, Lord God. Keep us as we go forth the remaining of this week, Lord God. We look for favor from you, Lord God. Give us success in the marketplace. Whatever our hands touch, we pray, Lord God, that you turn it to go away. Wherever our, our, our minds uh, uh, set is set on, Lord God, it be set on something productive. Holy Spirit of God, this evening, hide your word in our heart so we will not sin against you. Lord God, we speak blessings, Lord God, over everyone here this evening. Be with us and keep us in your watchful care, we pray in Jesus' name. And the people of God amen. said, amen. Amen, amen and, amen. and amen. amen. May God bless you. May God bless you all. And as they say during the holidays, and to all, a good night. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.